Come on, check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad walk on. Man, we down here, man, in New Orleans, man. Mm -hmm. Say, man, my... Hey, my guy's here, man. K mm -hmm. KLC, man. This guy right here, man. Ever since we started, man, he been our uh, hey, he been the, he been my guy in light, right? I be yeah, calling no, him. I'm no. like, I'm gonna call KL when I get to Atlanta. Where about we go? miss him? We be missing him. <laughs> man, yeah. thank you so much, man. Just a pleasure. It's an honor to be down here in New Orleans, man. Mm -hmm. No and, doubt. And in Peaches, man, this here place right here, man, uh has a lot of history. Man got a lot of history, man. You could feel it when you come in. Like I know it was another one, and I it was I had talked about the walls mm -hmm. you know they right. were, they were paint paints on the wall and what was that all what was that like during that time man it was at that time certain things is hard to explain yeah but it was special it was special it was special yeah and the thing about it is that like this building she owns this building mm -hmm. wow we used to be on base in close around the French quarters before she came here and she was leasing it. I think like Yeah, she said the parking over there was terrible. It was over yeah, there. very terrible. And they would always try to boot, boot y'all when they right. <laughs> so she hated that. Right. And she do everything out of the benefit of her customers and mm -hmm. the and the people. She always made it convenient for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And always. She want like she was definitely like 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 when I talked with her about that wall, that messed me up. She was like, "One your baby bought it the whole the year." Whole I'm year. like, "What?" <laughs> so she's like, "Yeah, he put up for it the whole year. He just had that's yeah. just how he is." And it's just the 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 way the culture is down here about the music is something else too, because it ain't it's not just hip hop. You got right. jazz and you got all genres of music down right. here, man. That where people love the the city. It's a party town. You know what I mean? Like right. I seen uh, that new video that y'all did. It ain't out yet, but Paco showed it to oh, me. Run his town. The energy, man, of it that is, video. And the quality is amazing. The quality yeah. is amazing, but it's just the the dancing and the, the creativity. You, you don't get that in no other city, right. man. You just that ain't something that you can you can't mimic it nowhere else. But that yeah. wall is for local only. That's right. it. No, nah, no, no other artists can. Well, as long. Oh, it's only as, for local artists. As long as. She been having, and think about it. She had a wall for every spot that she was. Every spot. Every spot. Except from this one. Right. She. she it was. It was. It was three before this. Mm-hmm. It was. I think it was three before this because it was. Yes. If after this one, it was the one on Basin. Mm-hmm. Then. Gentilly. And then Carrollton. This is the okay. fourth, fourth one. one. How important? How important of a part did Peaches play, as far as in the music? Which I know is important, but how? When you look at it from when y'all first started, every artist's success came through this place. Every artist, because she said that no other every store artist. did the hip hop. They wouldn't take the hip hop. They wouldn't because, because of the, language, of the cursing, yeah, the cursing and all of right. that. Right. But did she tell you um, the store in Gentilly? Is way he found Mia. Right. That's what that, that I asked her about. But we didn't, that. she didn't mention she which didn't, store. Which store? That that's what but, I was trying to get. So and I told her, I said, man, she worked for she worked for Peaches as well, and she, right. they was like family. She said, it's hard to get her story out because everybody is family. She ain't playing right. about yeah. that. Everybody is family. And she don't want to say too much because she she's like she wants the people to tell their own, own story. Right, right, right. So but she, but she did say that Mia did um, was living with her for a while. Oh yeah, too. yeah. Because it's like um, one thing I could say is that anytime it was to a point to where the artist had success and it kind of fell on hard times, yeah, she gave him a job at her store. Oh, mm -hmm. that's dope. I didn't know that part. That that's really and that's special, bro. See, she's too humble to say yeah. she embraced the culture. She you embraced know? it. She helped push it, you know, she, she pushed the artists, she sold their music, and then if hard time fell, they had a place for them for employment. Mm -hmm. Wow, so this place means a lot. And try to help get them back off their feet. Right. I know. Definitely. Because she was saying that, because a lot of y'all were just young kids who didn't know how to 
market yourself, didn't know how, how to, to get the, the music out part. there. She said she would send a lot of the records to the big labels to right. get, you know, them really? to sign you She would do yeah. everything to try to make mm-hmm. sure. She, yeah. And she did say that. That's dope, man. Like I said, that ain't, and, and that's God. Mm-hmm. Like I told yeah. her, man, you got to be special to be able to be able to keep those relationships going. Was it BG? She said she sent yeah, his. Yeah, she sent she his said too. She said right? she sent his. He said all of them. Like that, mm-hmm. if they dealt with her, she was going to try to help at the utmost mm-hmm. is what I'm hearing. Right, and she, she. When it came down to her situation, she dealt with um, P and Baby hands on. She, yeah. She she don't go anything that was dealing with no limited cash money. She talked to the, the two bosses. She didn't have, she, they didn't want to go through nobody. They, they told her, no, you don't talk, you talk to us. Mm. Wow. They wanted to make sure she talked to them. Right. Because they know how instrumental she was in, you know, the success you know, of the artists and those companies. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely amazing. When when you think about because you guys are on tour and y'all being down here, this was, how was it, how was it last night? Let's talk about it a little bit. Because y'all back at home, man, and that's something. Right. And the turnout. The turnout was, they sold out. Of mm-hmm. course. Because they say they sold out and they have all of this going on in the city. Like, um, like I said, they have the Jazz Fest. Okay. That's something that the people been waiting for for three years since COVID hit 19. Everything was shut down. This is like the reopening and let you know, okay, we back open for this. Really? And this the first one? This is the first one. Wow. I, did you, I didn't know that. Mm-mm. That's the, the first one. This is the first one. Yesterday was the f- official first day. So it made sense for y'all to perform yesterday. Since right. y'all but, are from here. Well, look, look how it fell in. It fell in and... To me, I, I, I wasn't concerned, but I was just thinking about how the numbers may be because it was supposed to be last week. Okay. But that changed because um, the Hornets made the playoffs. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when they made the playoffs... The home game fell on our tour date. <laughs> 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 but it makes sense, though. When you look at it from a jazz festival perspective, yeah. and so you get like, more people to come out because people are already booked to come out for the jazz festival, and then y'all are here. How do they do that though? Like far as ticket sales and stuff, when when they have to push something back or move something, how do they just tell them? You, no, they just do a reissue and just let them know that the date has been rescheduled. been rescheduled. Tickets and, are still good, but it's for this date. And but see, that sucks for people who are flying in just for the that show. Part. <laughs> <laughs> that part. That <laughs> part. Hey man, hey man, but but look man, there's no limit. Stop playing, man. Yeah, we gotta get to, we gotta get to them. On. Yeah, yeah. Well, diehards ain't trying to hear it. They coming. Yeah, they they, they, they coming. They it out. It was, and and um, I know you told us off air, but tell us on air who all performed. First of all, you had the whole No Limit Army, which was you know, P Silk, Mystical, Mia X, Servon. And then you had um, and Fiend. Mm-hmm. And then you had uh, Juvenile. Okay. Who bought out Nelly. Mm-hmm. I know it was He said down. Snoop. And Mac, and Mac Mac as well. Mac, okay. Mac, Mac. And, um, and then you had P who bought out um, Keith Sweat, Snoop, and um, damn, Keith Sweat, Snoop. It was that's a hell of a roster already. I know. Yeah, that's a hell of a roster. I know, but man. he missing some. So <laughs> it was, it was, who, who, who did he? He bought out Keith Sweat. He bought out Snoop. Snoop. Oh man, it gonna come to me. I forgot. Don't worry about that. Let's move on. But that yeah. must have been an amazing show. Now, everybody did such a great job, didn't they? Yeah. Everybody yeah. performed and, and, and did a good and because it, it, it wasn't no one or two. So Snoop did like nine records. It's in New Orleans, wow. so at the end nine of the day, records. Snoop did like nine. nine records, and um, Nelly did about four. Wow, that's a hell of a time. That's a hell of a time, man. You guys, man. So being back home, you know, <clears throat> when you come home, what's the first food you go get? 
Um, <laughs> whatever saying? they have at the house, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it all, it it'd it be based on, be, it be based on mystical because I could wait till I get home, but you like, man, ah, man, I gotta eat now, man, and whatever you want, <laughs> <laughs> and whatever, whatever, whatever you have a taste of, we we just go there. So there's no food that um you don't normally cook at home or like when you somewhere else that you like. Man, when I get home, I got to eat this. Because the fruits and all the food is like different. Because like in Jamaica, like in Jamaica, you know, like I love seafood, but like when I buy like my red snapper and stuff like that, mm-hmm. here it just tastes different from when I go home. Because oh, when you go home, yeah. you get it so fresh. Right, 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 right. Well, it's it's kind of, it, it had changed since my son left us and went to Dallas. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, straight up Dallas, <laughs> Texas. That guy in Dallas, man. And he loving it, right? Yeah, oh, and yeah. he's a chef, so, you know, he normally be cooking stuff. But right. now but, now you got to pull it together. Well, I, I really don't have a, I really don't have a, um, a certain thing that you love. Nah, it's it just whatever they have there. But see, so like, he's right not now, picky. He's nah. not picky. No, 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 no. I'm picky as ever. I know. I don't even, I, I don't play. It's going to be something here. I got to have that. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't but a simple burrito. <laughs> right, right. But, but I, re- I really don't have a, 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 a favorite spot because everybody in New Orleans know how to cook. Cook, yeah, that mm-hmm. makes it hard, right? So so um, when I, we came, we went to the uh, Harrow's, the casino. Yeah. You got to go there. We stayed too close to it not to go. We were right. right there. And we just walking and just checking out everything, man. People walking everywhere. That jazz fest, it had people just coming and going. And it's I just, told him I wanted to go down Bourbon Street, French Quarter, all that walk yeah, around. But he was like, nah. With the, they walk out the casino with the, uh, with the drinks and everything. And like, he, that's he, not he, normal. He, he like, do that here. You yeah. can't do that everywhere. Bourbon Street, it's just off the chain. And Paco walked out with it, with his drink when we went. We took him. And that we wasn't even on Bourbon Street. Yeah, but that I was, was just like, "What are you going?" Right and he's like, "Nah, we do we do that all the time." So here. is it I'm everywhere like, in New Orleans you can do yeah, that? That's 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 just here, man. You gotta understand this city is like they will they will ticket you for riding driving without a seatbelt on, but it's legal to <laughs> ride a bike without a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and you can you can drive down the street with an open container of alcohol and all of that. As long as not while driving. Not while driving. I'm just checking. Right. But, but you can it, walk it, down the street walking. with. Okay. Because I know it's even when I went to Walmart. Walmart had. I don't even know how liquor stores even survive. <laughs> Walmart has like Walmart all got the liquor, liquor stores and everything. I mean, yeah. like vodka, but everything. Just think about this here. Any retail store, anything that's on the corner that sells something, don't have alcohol. So. Has alcohol in it. Every time. Pharmaceutical and all of that. That's crazy. And Dallas is not like that. Of no, course everywhere. not. What about Sunday? Do they cut? They don't sell out to, to 12? So no, is no. It we, we don't have no... Time? No, we don't have no alcoholic... Uh, no alcohol... Um, they stop at one? Curfew. They don't... Oh, it's, no, it's wide open all the time. 365, seven days a week. Wow. It's not like that everywhere. Alcohol anytime. You know how some places, like, you, uh, they don't sell it on a Sunday? That's right. right. Texas. Shit. Go right now. It's the day <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> you gonna get anything you want. Bourbon Street is wide open. Hand grenades just all through that place. Mm-hmm. Wow, mm-hmm. man. So, what other cities are you guys hitting? Like, y'all, are y'all done with the tour? Or is it going to... Hell no. They about to expand it. Oh, so it's steadily pushing more and more. Yeah, it, it's just... Because of request. And then some of the some of the some of the cities we're gonna resurface because like Dallas. Oh yeah, I know we're gonna do Dallas again. That's it's gonna cut people don't want because they so, everybody okay, get but, to come. But let me ask you a question. Okay, so we have no limit who is performing. So when you go to all these other cities, do you always bring out other people other than no limit to perform some, as sometimes well? Sometimes what they'll do is they'll um, find whoever the hottest. Uh, local artists in the city and get them an opportunity to open. And what Mia does is that every city she go to, she finds their best dancers. Okay. To perform with her on stage. That's that's good because we always would talk about how t- people come in fr- to the city wherever you're performing from out of town get the bag and leave and not really help anybody there. Mm-hmm. But that's a good way of that's how to way of showing, right. love, showing love to the people in right. the city and helping them get a bag as well. So I right. like that. And sometimes what P do, depending on, you know, how big the event is, like um, when we do the Make Him Say On record, he will get like one of the local um, high school bands Okay. To come and perform the record with him. With wow, them. that's big. And I know mm-hmm. that inspires the heck out yeah. of them. 
Yeah, that's crazy, man. So, <clears throat> how far is where you grew up at from here? You know, I'm I'm not from I mean, here. This this whole strip is like um, you could take this street and just pretty much ride it to the end. Cause this, this street goes a it's far way. It's very yeah, it, it goes. And when you go from this street to my we're street, on market. You, you're gonna you're gonna magazine. Go here. I mean, Mag, well, magazine is across the street. Right. You see Napoleon. Yeah, the street that goes that way. Right. You ride down, and when you pass that up, when you get to like Napoleon and Ferret. That's the 13th wall. That's where BG and Baby is from in the high school that okay. me and Baby first met. Not okay. the high school, the uh, middle school. Middle okay. school. It's where me, Baby, BG, Mystical, we all went down. Yeah, I school. went to that school. And when you go further down, that you, you leaving, because that's the 13th wall. And then when you go further down, you're going to drive into the third. Yeah. And that's the area of way. Um, the No Limit P, the Magnolia, the Magnolia Project, Calio Project, Melphamine Project, and that's when. How how different is it post Katrina? Like like how how different is it? It's definitely uh it bounced back. That's better. what I was saying. It, but it bounced back. You say better? Yeah, 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 definitely. But it it, it still have some places that um that need to be uh. Straighten out. Straighten though. out. Yeah. So when you go down through some of those old neighborhoods, you still can tell the damage. Oh, yeah, because a lot of people, when it hit, a lot of people, when they were forced to move out, when they got to where they were, they decided that, you know what, we ain't going to go back. Yeah. Did you did you ever see it after all that damage coming back the way it is now? Hey, man, let me tell you something. I, I, a friend of mine works like he's a big deal at the um, he works at the like head care to the state capitol building yeah, yeah. so when Katrina hit I was able to go there when it hit wow mm. when it hit it because um, at that time I think my mom and my grandmother was still in there but the thing about it was when we went we had to go on boats the highest, the highest place where we was able to go, we had to uh, drive. We was on the bridge, and um, when we came down off the bridge, we had to get on the boat to maneuver through the city because the water was too up high. Mm. And 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 so you and people <clears throat> were still living in certain places. Yeah, certain places that set up high. Set up high, they was able to stay. Yeah, that's this, what I was always. Right. Wondering, I was wondering because, like I was telling him yesterday, when we were driving down the street, you know how some of these. Um, Buildings have like the upstairs with the balcony right. and stuff, and I'm like, when a hurricane come, if you upstairs, does the water? The water don't get up there, do it? No, does no, it? no, it no. Don't get that high. No, no, no. See, okay. the, the city of New Orleans is built like, like a bowl, like this here, right? Okay. Just so, just see if if, if this is ground level. Mm -hmm. The further you get into the city, it goes down. It goes down. Whoa. Oh. And that's why. Mm -hmm. That's why when it when it sometime when the weather be bad, how the water just sit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So but it's not it's not flat. Y'all don't have tornadoes out here, dude. That's one thing we were wondering. Nah, no. No. hurricanes. Hurricanes, yeah. Yeah. But it's so weird because like being from the islands, like I'm terrified of tornadoes, but I'm not scared of a hurricane because <laughs> I've experienced hurricanes and I've right. been there, done that. You know, it's not like. Y'all, because you know how, for some reason, it does seem more terrifying for over here in New Orleans because right. when you see it on TV, but like in, in Jamaica, and I live by the sea. Right. Yeah, right but by the sea. But it's so crazy that, okay, when we did, when I experienced it, we didn't stay at our house. We, you know, you're batting all the, the glass and all of that right, stuff right. like that. But I just went up the street. And when we went up the street, the sea, I could still see the sea. Right. But while the hurricane, cause you know, the winds change after the eye of the hurricane. Right. So, like, say, the wind coming back from here. I was outside standing in front of the house just watching zinc flying and this flying and that flying. And then when the wind changed, you just go to the back of the house and stand up outside looking at everything. Right. Like, <laughs> so, you, for it's me, a game, it, right? it, it, it wasn't. And they had the thing, y'all could close your house off, too, right? Not really. You're talking, yeah. you know. But you know, that down. but you know what's so different is that like, like hurricanes is it, it, it's, it's every year. You know that yeah. every, we have hurricane seasons every, every year. year. That's how Jamaica is too. The minute what it hit like August, when it when the heat hit, uh huh, all the way back till like 
uh, is it like September, October till October, November? Until, until it start cooling off. Yeah, that's when it stops. When it start us cooling off, same. that's when it uh it settles down because the hotter the water is, yeah, that's when it gets mm-hmm. bad. But people be trying to leave, like the news be pop. Sometimes they'll say, it, and the older people, I used to trip off the older people because they don't care. They right. be like, we staying it out. Mm-hmm. I hear that a lot of no, times. But yeah. you got to because then, like, you know, they tell people there in Jamaica. Looting your houses it, right, and stuff. tell people in Jamaica, um, y'all try to get to higher grounds, but some people do leave, especially if you live by the sea. Right. But some people are like, no, because all it does is give people opportunities to break into your house and steal. Yeah. Right. So people be staying there with their shotguns, making sure, like, come on, I'm ready for you. Right. The mole heads. The mole heads. Yeah. Listen, they, they have this like that here, too. <laughs> but, the, but the difference is, is that like, we just had a tornado, a tornado here, like a couple, like last month. Oh, so you did have one. But that was like the first time to where it hit and everybody was like, damn, look. Oh. To where it was actually in, in the, the city. city. You could see did it, it touch damage? Down. Huh? Any damage? Yeah, it was just like in the night ward, and like in the mm-hmm. lower night ward. It, it's, where, it, where it hit sporadic. It, it don't. It never hit. Like that's the part that I'm scared. It's, that's the reason why I'm more scared of a tornado because when it, it jumps and you don't know, and if you get caught in it, that's it. You're done. Like how you? How are you going to escape from that? Well, just think about this here. Now, just imagine this here. Like something like that, we probably wouldn't fear. Because as long as it don't take the house off the ground, but just imagine this here. Katrina, high water, when it floods, you actually get like goddamn alligators to swim. Yeah. Yeah, because oh y'all got all of that. We don't have them alligators and stuff <laughs> like, like that. They don't they don't come up. they don't come like in the city, 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 but sometimes you I may never get thought a, about but that. See, you got you gotta think, okay, now where all this wildlife gonna go? That's right. Mm, I never thought about that. They you coming in the gun. city. You know? Shoot one. So, yeah. But, you know, but just think about this here, though. Like, like, like they don't come. Just even, even like when we on 10. When y'all was on 10 coming yeah, in. Yeah, coming in. See, when that water rise, see, after the last uh, um, hurricane that we had, that's all you saw was on the side, dead alligator just all through that. Boom, mm. boom, boom, boom. Wow. And there's a lot. I know because I was telling him when we were driving in, I'm like, dang, these people got a lot of bridges. There's a lot of water around here. Yeah. Y'all, and y'all bridges is not no short bridges. No, nah, it they could be a long I was bridges. tripping off like, that. But look, and think about it, if you paid attention on your way back, like, well, since the um, Katrina, you can't see him now in the um, the last, uh, I think it was, not Ida. Was it Ida or it was the one before that? Mm-hmm. If you were to drive, like when you get on a spillway. Mm-hmm. And you could look on the side of these bridges. They had homes people actually set up. Really? Yeah, they're they not there now, though. But, like, who would want to live so close to the... It's people, dangerous. But they've been living like that for years. How can you years. talk, though? That, that, you know already in Jamaica, see, they do crazy. But see, it's That's a different when they call, like, Cajun. Like, when you live and they have people that live... Like, you ever seen an episode of this uh, TV series called The Swamp People? Yes, yes. Like, that's for real. Really? Yes, and it's not far from here. Wow, that's crazy. Like you in the like people have actually homes in the actual in the swamps. swamps, and they deal with the, the alligators and all of that stuff. Cause the alligators down there in them swamps, and they don't fear them. They don't fear them. But you know, they come here. That's why I was saying, like, when with the with the tornadoes, to where mm-hmm. like if when one hit, we know we know how catastrophic this shit could be. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But by no one really having been affected to it, they're like, God damn, look at that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so what, it was like the first time when they actually saw it, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So it was more of, um, you know, a first time thing to where when you hear something, hear about something, and then the first time, you've been hearing about it for, for years and years, but it's the first time you actually Seeing it. see it. That's crazy. Let me ask you this, man, just about the music a little bit. Talking to Paco, man, this dude is special. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And he, but he's he's ready. He thinks he's ready. But he said when KL ready to get, you know, do it, we're going to pull the trigger. Pretty much is what he was saying. Mm-hmm. You know, but he's like, but I know it's good. 
I said, how you know, Kel? Nah, no, I, I don't have to hear it from you. He's I know, like, I know the music. I know <laughs> <Right>. the music. <laughs> he right. loved the music, man. So how did you and him link and just, just give me the spill on that? Um, when me, I, I was introduced to Paco from um, a guy that, that I work with. Okay. As a matter of fact, me, um, his name, uh, DJ Don Juan and um, Big Fest. Fest just, he passed away, you know, so rest in peace, Fest. Rest in peace, Fest. Yes, and... um. Him and Fess was real. I think Fess was dating his sister or something. Okay, okay. But Don and Fess knew of Paco. And um, I think um, we was working with Paco, but I it, I think Fess knew that because um, he, he passed from cancer. So I think he um, we started working with him, but I think Fess knew like his time was short. Wow. So he kind of, him and Don kind of bought him in with yeah. me. So yeah, we both all could work with him. Yeah, and so when he brought him in, and I heard him, and that's that's how I pick artists. It's like, um, if it's something that I've never heard before, that's all I need to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, yeah, because you also have <clears throat> Soldier Slim's sister. Right. And with her, you hadn't been managing. I mean, with her for a very long time, have you? Well, put it like this here. I've been around Peaches when she was this big. Mm -hmm. But she was a child, you know. And, you know, Slim, uh, Soldier Slim, he was deep in the streets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was the barber for the Magnolia Project. Mm -hmm. She said that. Mm -hmm. She talked about that. She said he was, and he was popular at her, for her in the sixth, seventh grade, she said right. that when she came she out one time, story. she was like, everybody was just out there. Surrounding, you know, like, asking for autographs. Surrounding, asking right. for autographs. Like the whole, and they were telling her, like, so, so slim's out there, you right. know. And so he had to have this chemistry with these people at that point. That love. That they loved him here. It was just something about him that, that um, people drew to him. And the thing about it, 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 was, it was to the point the way if you had a problem with Slim, right or wrong, you had a problem with the city. They weren't trying to hear it. They ain't trying to hear it. So, Soldier Slim, like you knew him from the very beginning. <clears throat> right. How did, you, how did you know he was special, like when you first started dealing with him? Well, I was DJing in the Magnolia Project, right? Okay. And I'm going to tell you how it started. And um, he wanted to get on the mic. So I was on a, the, the second balcony tier. And um, he stood by me. He stood by me long enough. So I just ran some records. I gave him the mic. But when he grabbed the mic, he squatted down all the way down so nobody <laughs> could see him, right? But it didn't, it didn't hit with nobody because they just jamming. Yeah. So um, when they was rocking, I pulled them up. They're like, oh, man, that's Slim. That's Slim. <laughs> so he started, you know, because he always was doing like little, he was, he was young getting in uh, venues that, you know, that he wasn't supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. Wow. But by him being like that in the streets as far as being like, with the music thing, he was in the, he was in the streets both ways, but when he, when he started popping young, they they didn't care about that because you know like when you when you when you got these holes in the wall, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Streamline detour four nines Newtons. He was like our little hole in the wall spots. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a uh, big man's to where like it's a bar. It's like it's a bar, but at night they turn it into a club. Wow. So was he, like, when you think about him, because I've heard many people compare him to Tupac. I've heard them compare right, him. Right, right. And I think it was because of his, just his artistry or just the right. way his, the way his feel was. It was more like this here. I'm, I'm going to finish this in note. So after he came and we did that uh, when I was in the project and he came, I told him, because um, he's going to lead up to the Tupac stuff. So I told him, um, back, back, so when Slim, is when he came, when Slim came, 
you know, he did his thing. He came and then went out DJing. He grabbed the mic and um, he did his thing. And after that, he squatted down and I pulled him up in the crowd. Man, oh man, that's, that's slim. Slim. No, no, no. That's slim. So after that, I was like, look, this is what we gonna do. And how old was he at that time? He had to be about 13, 14. <sighs> He did his. Really, <laughs> he really not wasn't supposed to be there at that time. Right, that's, that's what I was saying. Like in these these bars, like he, he was right, to he be was in going there. in though. Right, right, right. So um, I pulled them all. I said, "Look, come by me, and um, we gonna start making real records." Wow. So this would led up to the two two boxes. So we got that understood. So when we started working, well, when I started, you know, because I was always working, so he used to come in and do these songs, right? But it was always shit that he just got into in the street. <laughs> it was real. Yeah. That's the Tupac part right there. That's the Tupac <laughs> part. So when it's real, it's real. Right, so when we up in there... Um, He'll come up and he motherfucker playing with me for a beat. Fuck all that. Boom, 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 boom. He was, I, got, I, I, got, I got to get this out, man. They're they playing with me. He loved to put it out in the, so they'll know what's going on. And it didn't matter who. I can just imagine. And this way it, come, this way it comes into the part to where when I say that um, if you had a problem with him. You had a problem with the city. You had a problem with the city. That's crazy. Like when you when you really think about like like the way that his his era was because this is an era. This ain't really just not like this, these are times. You know what I mean? Right. Like when you look at the time that he had, you know, in the new because was it during the same? It would have been the same time that was it before the Cash Money movement or during the Cash? No, movement? this was before. Before I know when you met him, it was before. But I'm saying, did it lead up into it or? Cause I, it was a lot going on down here, man. It led up to this here when, when he and I started putting like his tapes and records out, right? Yeah. That was right before I met P. Okay. So, even before I met P, Baby came at me. Man, what y'all gonna do with Slap? <laughs> he wanted him. Yeah. So, um, me and Baby talked. So I bought the idea to Slim at the time, and um, I was just letting him know, man, because at that time, you know, we were still local. You know, I'm DJing the clubs. I wasn't making that kind of money, so I had to do a couple gigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You trying to make sure you keep right, it going. Right, right, right. So um, I told him, like, look, man, I, as a matter of fact, I bought it to him and another artist that I had named uh, Reg. Like, his name was, he was slugged up nigga. Like, his whole top and bottom all gold, gold teeth. He wasn't trying to hear it. Right, so him and Slim was tight. Yeah. Tight. When they came in the room, you knew it. Yeah, because it was like with them, like see when them two get into it, and the people on each side, they had to tell it, look, whatever's going on with him is me and him. None of y'all can't tell me shit about him. And he said, the other one, like, none of y'all can't tell me shit about him. That's how tight If I'm going to talk about him, I, I only had that right. Y'all don't. Wow, that's because they holding it down in the city. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was. But um, I told Slim one time that baby came at me for um, Slim. He's like, look, Funky B, fuck all that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be out here hustling, and you do your thing, and we just going to put our money together. If I got to put, we got to put that shit out ourselves. I don't care how long it take. He just liked just the feel of having it going itself. Yeah. With you, you know, and him. He, he just wanted me, he, he wanted me to do it. Period. He wasn't trying to move. He wasn't without trying you. to move. So when the situation came with P, I bought it. I bought him the idea because that's when I started bringing. When I got with P before we came back down, when I started bringing all of the artists in that I had. Yeah. I bought. He was gonna be the first one. Why? When I went up there to um, California. California. And um, Slim so was on some look, man. Funky B, look, man. If this nigga ain't paying us no money right now, fuck it. I'll wait till you get home. Boom, boom, boom. But it just in that process, when I went up there by P, he was getting into some shit. So he wound up having to go do some. He had to sit down and do some jail time. How long did he stay in jail? 
man, he was always in and out. <laughs> like, he'd come in, do a few years, come out, do a few months, go do a day or two, That's do another a week. Thing like Pop. Come out. Same thing. And then boom, boom, boom. So when they finally, that time when No Limit finally hit, I told Pete, man, I'm bringing him up here. He was like, man, look. <laughs> If you bring him up here, he's going to be your responsibility. Mm -hmm. He know already. He don't have to babysit nobody. <clears throat> right. But when, when, when I finally got Slim up there and him and Pete met. He had never met him? Pete knew of him. Of him, but he hadn't met him. He never met him. But see, Pete and uh, Boz, the red dude who be with Pete. Yeah. Him and Slim cousins. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So when um, I finally brought Slim up. Him and, became, him and Pete instantly became close. <laughs> and when Snoop came down. See, that's all these, these making sense, right? See, when, right. and when Snoop came down, Snoop was the first one that he clicked with. Mm. Because, because when we got on the road, um, Slim and Snoop was a, the newcomers. Yeah, correct. They was so the new, by them being so the newcomers, but Snoop was already who Snoop was. Of course, he was Snoop. But it's something about Slim. Snoop clicked with first. They him and Snoop was tight. Tight. Damn. Snoop was the first one that that he he, he locked in he with. He locked in with. I don't that, know. Did they make they didn't ever make that did they make some music together? They did a song called at the same time. At the <laughs> same time. Damn. They both came in at the look same that song. time. I got it. Oh, song. you know I'm riding. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely will ride to it. Mm. And so did you did you did you produce that or somebody else produced that? I think I did. Yeah, did. I think I did it. Yeah. I think I did it. What song did Paco talk about yesterday that you did not realize that Kale had done that beat? Oh that one with the young greatness? No. Mm -mm. It was something that you done. I done forgot now, but it was something I did not realize that you did not you done realize it. you did it. But, it. but you done it's it. It's a popular it's song. It's a big song. It's a very big song. Then he, he definitely, his song was big. The one, was it Duffy? It was Duffy. Yeah, Duffy was a big song for him. Mm -hmm. We talked about that one too. Yeah, yeah, that, that boy, there, um, he, he said he did everything like nobody wanted him to. <laughs> Everybody was against the way everything they told him not to do, that's what he done. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but see that that be the ones. See, you have to be freely with artists to let them be them. I don't sign if I if I if I if I see an artist and I want to sign them, I'm not signing you to change you. I mean everything about you that I see in here I like. Yeah. So when you come in, we could just work. I don't have to worry about telling you now you need to change this and do this and do this and do this and do this. So it's like when when I hear when I hear something in the artist and I see them, it's nothing about them I want to change. Because that's what I'm looking for. Wow. Well wait, wait, wait a minute. Now I gotta call you out on that. The only reason I gotta call <laughs> call Big Court. Big Court <laughs> Now this when they was young. Now see this the young kid. Look at him looking. Look, well, this hold the young kid. You see that look? Like, when he said big court, he looked at he looked to the side like, like big oh. court say, man, I came up to uh, California, Hay Howard, or Haywood clip, or somewhere, and he said, he, he said when I when I would rap, man. He'd just be staring at me, man. Through the window. Through the window. I said, what? <laughs> he say, he'd just be staring at me, man. And it's like, man, do it again. <laughs> I said, well, that. well, that's the young kid. Well, well, yeah. I'm going to tell you why. This, 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 it, it was like that with Court, right? First of all, when Court came, we was in his apartment that P had us in. Yeah, he told yeah, me. And hey, is it what? Hey, 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 wood. Hey, yeah. wood. That's what he said. Yeah, it was three niggas in a bra. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that me, Surf, Mia, and Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's he said, what he, he said. He said Beats by... Um, Beats by the Pound. Was there too. Well, it, it was that's just him. me and Moby. Oh. Him and Moby. This was okay. before the rest came, because this this is the hotel where we started Beats by the Pound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is where it all started. He was, was he there at the time when it all oh. started? Big Court. Yeah. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, Court, this, this was before we came down and got all of these artists. Okay. Mm -hmm. This was when... I came there and it was only me, Mia, Serve, and Moby. Okay. So when we up there, we working with L. Eaton, Two Sharp producer. Um, uh, who who was up there? It was a couple producers that we worked with. I know L. Eaton was one. Um, 
uh, K. Lou. So, Court was a product that P bought in. Okay, yeah, he said yeah. that. So it wasn't on me. <laughs> so now the reason why I was so hard, hard on court was was that um one of the guys he was with that was in a group with him. Yeah, yeah, he talked the about manager. it. The manager. No, said, this, no this one, one of the guys the one that didn't like uh, Master P. He didn't, yeah, he, he, he didn't like Master no, he, P. He, he didn't like P. Nah, yeah. he said he, he didn't like him because he was trying to get a, he wanted a, a advance. He thought right. he was, and he Court was, was like, this is an opportunity, so they right. was having issues about right. that. But, but but see, the thing about what Court was, was that like, Court from Kansas. Yeah. Right. So Kansas City, Missouri. Can, well, Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> let, me get, let, me, let me get that straight. Let me get that. You know Kansas about, City, you know Missouri. About right, right, right. <laughs> so, so, when when I take in somebody, first of all, they're from where I'm from. Where you from? So, but when Court came in, it changed. He, came, like he came in with Pete. So my thing is, as a matter of fact, <laughs> outside of you know Big Ed and the the, the ones that was with True, mm -hmm. Court was like the first one that Pete bought in. In mm -hmm. that's what he said. Of what he had and what I had. Yeah. Okay. So when Pete bought him in, I'm just trying to figure out why. How am I gonna make this work? Because um, Colt was dope, though. But his sound was different. But his sound and his lingo was different. Mm -hmm. That's that is something else. This, you know what I'm saying? That's, what, that's what masterpiece saw. Right, but you know, it it, it it was to the point like when Colt Colt came in as, as a producer. Certain things by me being from New Orleans, I didn't have to tell Slim. Because it's just the New Orleans in them. Correct. It's going. To, it's just going to come right. natural. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just trying to fix a way to make it work with me and Court. Mm -hmm. Now I know I was holding on. Now, now you think about this. Uh, I was, I was <laughs> but, but, but listen though, the, you you made think, him better but, though. But think oh, about yeah, it was. Think about, it was to make him better. But think right. about, and he said it made him he better. Said it. But think about the fact that he was the first of many. Right. Because you got to realize Snoop came after that, and he mm -hmm. had a different lingo yeah. but that was way on down but just the many different people he was about to work with right like that now he wasn't thinking like that at the time pretty sure you weren't thinking i'm about to work with a lot of people no no you were no. just thinking i got to get this guy sound right because he's not sounding like us exactly but see you look at you, you know you bought up snoop but see snoop come from under dre correct so when snoop came to no limit it kind of had me like damn because one thing about dr dre his expectations of work is through the motherfucking yes. roof. Yes. And you're right. And, yes. and Court had never been in the studio before. Right. So with, mm -hmm. with, with that situation, so Snoop already came in. With some experience. Develop and experience. Right. Yeah. Court came in. Green. Like. And ready to roll. Right. He just wanted to come in. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? So I, I'm just trying to, in, in, in the top of, like I say, he was always nice. Yeah. But sometimes, like. When Shaq and Kobe was in the Lakers, they didn't pop until Phil Jackson came. That's right. That's right. They had all that talent. Yeah, and couldn't figure it out. Right. So, but when Court came, I'm I'm mapping it out. Okay, let me see how this gonna work. What did P say to you about that? Like, he, far as the 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 way you guys would work. P, P he never he questioned me. Mm -hmm. He never never. never. He just knew y'all had to figure it out. Yeah, he, he he knew I was going to figure it out. That's the traits of a, of a, a boss. Yeah, good leader. Definitely, he, good he leader. knew he knew the trait. He he never questioned nothing that I did. I I've never remember P getting in the studio and say, "Man, I don't like that beat." Like whatever I pulled up, he jumped on it and knew I was going to make it work. Because wow. you know what what is good for the team. You know what he likes. You know, you already know everybody. He right. know good music. Right. You know but good see, music. another thing about it too with P is this is that when I finally got with P, P was like, I finally have my own sound. Mm. He, had, he had his own music identity. That made mm. him feel like this is it. Right, because P worked with some bad motherfuckers. Yeah. When, I, when I got him with him in, in California, like EA Ski, yeah, but he still didn't have his own sound. He didn't have his own. It no, wasn't that, no, that, that Louisiana. It was a Bay Area sound. Mm. That's and that, right. And, and EA Ski was EA Ski DJ Darren K. Lou is like, like they ran that Bay Area shit. Mm. You know, EA Ski he did like all Spice One shit. Um, DJ Darrell he did Tupac Keep Your Head Up and 
And then he had K. Lou that who P worked with a lot. But see, that made me think of something else. Like, how did you and P like really know that y'all were about to work together? Like, when y'all, how did y'all know? Like, when you met him, of course, did, was it just about the music? No, no. It man, when I met P, it was in Atlanta at the very last Jack the Rapper convention. Okay, okay. P, it goes back to Mia. Okay. When P came, when we was up there, he came down to New Orleans, and he went to Peaches, Peaches Record uh, Peaches, and okay. Gentilly. Okay. He bought a lot of CDs. So when we came and went to Atlanta to work and promote and trying to shop Serve Demo, yeah, and that's when that big fight broke out with Luke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, Debt Row. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, everything is just moving all around, and just so ironically, we wound up together. Wow. And people were like boom, boom. He saw sir, sir, man, what's up, man? What's going on, bro? So like, you see, see, he knew Mia. No, he, he didn't, didn't know, know Mia. Mia at that time. No, he was just down here looking for. He was looking for a female artist, and ironically, he came to Peaches Records, oh. and, and Mia was working there. Of course, but did he, but, but did he know who Mia X was at that time? No, no, she so, didn't, he didn't know nobody. So okay, so when he walked in and he he met Mia, how did she shop herself to no, him? No, no, no. When he walked in, Mia wasn't there. Mia was at home getting ready for a Scarface concert. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and he found her way. She, he found his way to her house. Me like, man, what? I'm about to do. I'm about to go to a concert. How did he hear How did music? He know, right. How did he know about her? Look, every artist that P met through me, he didn't hear nothing. It was just that if I'm bringing him in. So you so knew Mia. Who, who told no, him about Mia? The people the, the people at the store, Sharani oh. and all the other employees. So he came here and was talking to everybody, and then they no, told him about. He just came here. To drop them CDs to, off. To, to right. buy and, come, because like CDs, I said. right. P and then just, they told him about Mia. They told him about Mia. He was looking for oh, all of the female okay. artists. And they got told him, you. you got Mia X work here. And, and she go in. And that's, all, that's the, all he needed to know. Wow. That's, that's all he needed to know. And he just went to her house and knocked on her door. Mia like, what? Would you- <laughs> but we going back to Atlanta. We going back to where when you, when Servon, when he knew Servon. Okay, so when, when it got to the point when Atlanta, right? When we got to Atlanta and this whole humbug is broke out and Serve and P, we all bumped up because it was me, Serve. It was just me and Serve because me, Serve, and a, another friend of mine went up there. But the other dude, he had to go take care of some business. So it was just me and Serve. And when the fight broke out, when we all, when it all came down and we all bumped into each other, it's like Serve and P, so he said, man, what's up, man? Boom, boom, boom. He said, nah, nah. He said, what you doing out here? Serve so was like, nah, man, I'm out just shopping my, you know, my demo. And P was like, man, I got this label that I'm starting, man. No limit records, man. You need to be part of it. Boom, 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 boom. See, he never he he haven't heard nothing from Sir. Yeah, they just we up there shopping some shit. He just just linking with him because he. he look, from at- let me tell you how it tied in though. So, Sir, and when he bought these CDs, right, he had to listen to them. So that is one album. And he asked Sir, man, do you know the dude who did the beats on his project? <laughs> Sir started laughing and he was like, What's funny? He said, Yeah, him, which was me. Yeah, yeah, you right there. <clears throat> so he asked Sir, Well, man, look, man, you need to be part of this. What I'm doing, man, I'm telling you, man, we about to pop, we about to blow. And Sir was like, Well, if my DJ can't come, which was me, I was the DJ and his producer, don't worry about it. <laughs> so he looked at Sir. He looked at, C- at that CD with them beats on it that he bought from this artist, which was one of the groups that we wind up signing on No Limit anyway. Yeah. And he looked at me. Oh, okay, fuck it, come on. <laughs> he won't make that move. He, he got to have everybody. And That's the only, loyalty, though. I love right. that. And the only time I went up, the only reason why I went up there is because I've never been on the West Coast before, before and I never flew on a plane. <laughs> That's the only reason you went? <laughs> yes. That's dope. <laughs> Not even for the opportunity. Well, I, 
She I, won't I, think I about know, flying I, on the plane. How old were you at this time? I had to be about what? 19? 21. 21? Around that, that, something like that. 21, 22, something like that. But, you know, it was like, that was the only reason why I went. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it was me, Mia, and Sir, we flew up there. He flew all us up there together. So when he met Mia. So all this happened at the same time. All this happened at the same time. He same already had trip. the apartment yeah. and everything set up? Nah, he found him. When he found out we was coming. He went and got the apartment. Um, we was in a hotel though first. Okay. So, um, so had you met Mia before? Oh hell yeah! So that, you knew her already. Everybody low because I was playing their records in a club. Yeah, I, I was, I was yeah. like, I was, I was the, the the DJ in this big old club. So I, I knew all of them. All so of the artists knew each already. other. Mm -hmm. We all knew each other. That's but, crazy. But when um we went up there, we only went up there for a week. And that week turned into a year. Mm. Wow. And you did y'all basically just y'all y'all didn't know where y'all was gonna stay. Y'all just kinda went to a, a hotel and just stayed there and then he winging it. Winging it. Yeah, we young, we, young. Know, we we only went up there for a week to work on some music that he was putting his compilation out on. Okay, which that, that, which which was Downside that? Hustler. Okay, that same one. Mm. Yeah. So we went up. There. So that's what, and that's why Court come because he's right, trying to. He was on that project. He was on that project. He had a some R.I.P. or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you know, with with within that, you know, um, Mia, you know, we all flew up there, and just for a week, just to work on that record. Mm-hmm. And I guess when he heard what was coming out. He's like, I gotta keep him up here. No, as a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, we went up there for about two days, two or three days. But it was around December, Christmas. So he was like, man, what, uh, how y'all feeling about, do y'all need to get back home for Christmas? And Sir said, uh, shit, I ain't tripping on Christmas. Christmas been missed us. <laughs> <laughs> so we was up there for about a week. And I had to come back because I had to go to court. So when he found out about, you know, man, I may have something here. Mm -hmm. That's when I think he started looking and found an apartment, apartment. for mm -hmm. us to stay up there. Wow, that was. Did you ever get homesick? Nah, you never did. Nah, but the thing about it, what 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 it was was um, I was being young, you know. I was just enjoying the moment mm -hmm. of just um, being in California, and P introduced me to like I said like um. DJ Daryl K. Lou and mainly EA Ski because EA Ski was who was doing his work. Yeah, EA Ski was big. You got like I said, he did all Spice One stuff. He was working with Q. Q. Short. He did all of this work with these Bay Area, you know, Ice, you know, um, Ice Cube and MC Ren, Ice T. He worked with all of them. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, and the thing about it was when I was DJing in the club, you know, bounce music is huge. And Spice One was the only record that wasn't locally that I was playing in that club mm -hmm. with bounce music that, you know, if I changed the pace of it, it wasn't going to affect nothing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Even though it was a different sound. So um, when we got up there for them two days that turned into a week, that turned into a year, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, things just started... He was like, he just wanted to come back home. Wow. When you think about <clears throat> it, the fact of, okay, you start talking. <laughs> so so he came back home after how long? Um, After us being there for a year. A year. And yeah. then when you came back home, because you had to go back again. How how long did you come home No, for? no, no. When we came home, we was home. You are home. That's when he was like, man, I'm he was more like, man, I'm ready to go back home. Did y'all come? Y'all came to New Orleans. Did y'all come to Baton Rouge? Where did y'all go? No, we all came back to New Orleans. But at that time, he wanted to be in Baton Rouge because he really didn't want to be in the city. It was, in the city, it was just gonna be too much. Yeah, everybody when he moved, it was right. Like, so he wanted to be kind of outside the city. And which why did he want to come home? He just missed home. I don't know. And the thing about it, when we came home, he said, "Man, just leave all that shit. Just take the equipment." <laughs> <laughs> left the left the apartment. Full of fully furnished, all of that. He just left. We just left. Mm. All of that. He said, "Just take your clothes and equipment. Fuck all this other shit. We about to go about back to, to leave." Home. How? How? Y'all just love home. We no. Um, no, no, no. This is how we left. 
he woke up. It was like two in the morning. You know, it was like uh, he came in and said, come on, we about to go. He said, just get uh, get the equipment, y'all clothes, and we out of here. Wow. I and mean, you didn't even know what he was talking about at that time? No. It was like we said, we going back home. You know what I'm saying? He said, we going to the city. We going to New Orleans. Okay. But the thing about it that, you know, just imagine that you just getting up in the middle of the night and say, come on, let's go. We ain't never coming back. <laughs> Did you feel hurt? <laughs> nah, not because I really. He about that work. I know, he ain't I know about, he about that work. But, but see, the it, thing, I really, didn't be, I really didn't establish no friends there, though. Okay. He was working. Because you were working so much. Right. And that time, <clears throat> during that time, they was putting out a lot of music. They was working. And at the end of the day, what did it, did it help coming back to New Orleans because of the feel? Yeah, but see, when it came back, that's when everything started popping. Pop so it. I was able to bring in the artists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when I came, I bought so it just now. And y'all just left oh, Mac, Big Fiend. Y'all left Big Court. Court. The Big Court didn't come with it down here. He went back to Kansas because he yeah, said he, he went Kansas back. City, Missouri. Right. Yeah. Big Court went back. But the thing about it was, I didn't know how that situation was going to play out because, you know, when when Court and I worked and I had to I had to I had to tan his ass in the studio. Um <laughs> but it, it made him a better it made artist. Him better, yeah. He said you was looking at him. So you just be staring like do it again. Yeah, like do it again. <laughs> because it's like when I was working at that when artists are artists, I listen for pronunciations. Mm hmm I listen for making sure even though it could be some street shit. Yeah. I still want you to say it right. That's very important. We had an artist came on the show and he was talking about it. I think it was Eclipse Darkness because he's one of those that he can spit real, real fast. According like to him, he's faster than even Twister. Well, he got songs with Twister. But and the difference is because like Twister, when he go really, really fast, I can't really can't understand him as well. Right. But this dude, whenever he did it, I could understand every single word. Right. He younger. was like, he was like, Enunciation is everything. To How him. you pronounce that yeah. word? Right, but see, that's that's what I was on court about. It wasn't that he wasn't saying the right shit. He was saying the right shit, but I wanted him to say it to where when a motherfucker hear it, they understood. They heard it. They 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 heard it and understood it the first time they heard it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was just more. It was just more of me coaching, um, court about being a better artist of your product, him him being an artist of delivery and saying it. I just wanted him to say that shit right. Which is which is understandable. <clears throat> you know, like like the thing you gotta understand, you guys, y'all were doing something that was gonna change it actually it swayed hip hop in a way. You right. know, like and and what one thing I always wondered was like I always was in my mind I wanted to put cash money and no limit together right. more than what I was thinking it right. it seemed separate but I'm like damn they they right there they they you could tell it was family you you knew it was respect right 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 I right. knew it was respect I didn't have nobody to tell me that but I also knew that it was not the same too I could tell that right. as well because it, it was obvious you know be, even everybody in the, in the city even us yeah we always figured and try to figure out like um, if we if no limit in cash money would have worked together, how e let alone even touring. That's what I was saying. It never even been a tour, or nothing. Nah, I it, was always wondering why. It never been a tour, or nothing. Um, but and y'all from here? Like, but why you got to realize together? juvenile on the on the ticket now. Yeah. Juvenile on tour with them right nobody, now. Nobody, nobody is juvenile. And Mister could have been kind of um, back and forth yeah. both sides, but it's it, it just more like right now. It's just more of um, like with Juve, it's just that nobody is committed. Like even though it's a no limit tour, nobody is actually committed and signed to this company no more. Okay, is mm -hmm. everybody we we are coming together to to do to this. do it. But so each artist is their own boss now. That's yeah. why it's called reunion tour. Right. So. And the thing about it was that, um, like, I even I even never understood, like, even after the situation with court, I, I always, like, um, I think I asked P about it one time about when we was moving, and I, I asked him about court. It was CCGs C C then. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? I asked him about the group, and he was like, P was like, well, I don't know. Because I guess 
one wanted to stay and the other one didn't. Yeah. So it was just That's like, what it was. He said that. Mm-hmm. Like right. one they did they wanted <clears throat> advance, okay? <laughs> right. And they would, but they didn't have nothing. And, and he the court say we don't have we this is an opportunity. That's what he kept telling me about right. that about what but the guy didn't like P because of he was pressing him for an advance, you know, or trying to get something out of it, you know. Right. And, 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 up front. And, right. And even at that time, you know, it was like um P had money. But the, I don't know what the company had. Like that that's what artists and people fail to understand. Mm-hmm. It's like like if I made all my money personally on another business and I decide to start another business like a record company, don't count on don't count on my personal money. You just look at to what what, what where the the, 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 the um the label is at right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, just I, I heard this one thing with with Shaq and Bill Cosby said when they when they children told him, "But Daddy, we rich." He said, "No, I'm rich." <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. Now, it's a hundred percent true. I'll help you get there. I'll get to. I help you get to where I'm going. But I'm rich. Me and me and your mama rich. Yeah. Y'all not. Mm-hmm. I remember Mystical seemed like I said. I think I said this before. He <clears throat> seemed independent somewhat. Mm-hmm. But then it seemed like he was with no limit. But right. it seemed like he was no independent. In my heart, I don't know if that was true, but it seemed that way. Like he wasn't with No Limit all the way at parts of his career when he was first starting. Well, it, it, like when he first started. Because I know he went to the military and all that, but it just seemed like it was like he was, like it was going two or three ways for well, him. Well, it like Mystical started out with me. Me and Mystical, me and Mystical was working together since like, 87, about 88, 89. So you could, you you remember him developing that style? Yeah. I, 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 when, when, he always, he always had that style. Yeah. Always. It was different. And that's the point. That's why I say when I take in the artists have to be something that I've never heard before. He was totally different than anybody else that I'd ever heard at the time. It was something different about the way his cadences and it just gave you a feel when Mystical would rap. Mystical is a huge James Brown fan. You can hear it. And you can see it. You can see perform. it when he performs. So the thing is that um, that's, that he is a performer. He leave it all on the stage. He leave it all on the stage. Every time. Every <laughs> time. He leave nothing, nothing left. Wow. I, I Like I said, when I first heard of him, it was this military thing. I, I I was like, this dude, this dude is something different. But at the end of the day, I could not get past this dude's lyrics and the way he, he right. the way he made you feel when you was in the club or whatever. Right. It was totally different than everything else that was going on during his time. And that may be why I couldn't put him in a group. In my mind, this had nothing to do with because you got to realize during this time we young. Right. And I'm just a dude to hear him, and I'm just out, and I'm buying CDs. I'm buying pl- from places like this. He's going to stand out, just put it like, just look at it like this. Here. As dope as Leaders of the New School was, you only remember Buster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the only one I remember. But I remember the Leaders of the New School. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, you but know, I don't, I, I, but Buster was the one that was. Well, I, I know all of them. I know you know him, but, but I'm telling you, me, I I just remember how how he was. He was different too. He everything he did stood, stood out. out from the rest. <laughs> mm-hmm. And see, that's what it was. And, and, and like you know, or mystical, like you know, Fiend was the same. Like they have they have these Fiend. You look at Fiend and Mystical, right? Shout out Fiend. I talked to him on the phone, bro. They have they have a voice. Mm-hmm. They have a voice. To where when they speak, it gets your attention. It gets your attention. And Mystical is like, the way you hear him on the record, Yeah, that's how he talks on, on a regular conversation. He's having a good time in life, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that much. He having a great time in life. Life is good for him because yeah. this nigga is energetic as ever you want to hear on a, on a song. He give it all. And that's how his conversation is all. Well, he got to mm. You ain't going to sleep. Hell no. <laughs> Hell so, no. You, I would love to have a conversation with him. And the thing about it is, the thing about it is that he will last as long as you ask. Mm. Wow. The more questions you ask, 
I can't about imagine it. that interview. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna get think it. About it. That's like um, when we go do performances. He got a lot of songs. He don't. He don't leave until the last person with an autograph won't sign his sign. He's all for his fans. Yeah. So he, he doing this every show. He every show we go do venues. We 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 be the last ones to leave. <laughs> <laughs> he we, work them down. We leave, when we leaving out. They sweeping the clubs up. They picking up the trash and blum blum blum. Like and everybody is out. And like, Everybody good? All right. He he will not leave until That's every amazing. last autograph. What did he say signed. coming back to New Orleans to perform last night? Oh, man. It's... You see what I'm saying? Because it's a difference when you come home, man. I just keep thinking about coming home. But see, it's like this here. Just, just, we do things here and there at, the, at home, right? But to be in a... Twenty thousand dollars, seventeen thousand seated arena yeah. sold out. That's so much See, love. It's it's a difference when, um, kind of like when you um marketing and promoting a record, right? The key to it is this here: when every DJ dropped the needle on your record at the same time, not just I have one planet here, and when he died, and when he done with it. Later on, somebody else going to start playing it. But see, when they put the needle on the record all at the same time, you have everybody listening mm -hmm. at the same time. Wow. That's what you want. Yeah. And coming home to the city and doing that, yeah. Is it any, like, <clears throat> I know you got a lot of relatives, but is it any... Like older people that still around here that when you come home you're like man I gotta go by there and check on such and such. Oh, it's always like my, you see what I'm saying? My, yeah, yeah. Because you at home. Because most of the time, it's like with me, it's like everybody's always at my mama house, which my mama house was the family house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then everybody started. Yeah, that's that's it. Moving on their yeah. own, but they always come back there. Okay. So when I come home. That's like the only spot that I go to because everybody who I grew up with still left. So when I pull up or we coming from a, coming from the airport and I just swing by my mama, everybody there already. So I could kind of meet everybody at one time. Wow. So the family get to see each other. Right. And and nephews and all that, they they there. Right. Man, that's that's got to be nice, <clears throat> man. Because, man, I, that's something you, you can't make up. Mama, you, mama, something, it's something about mama. I, I lost mine early on. But to have your mother and be able to go yeah. home and stuff, that <clears throat> stuff is so important and it's dear to me for sure. Mother's Day are hard, right? You know, when you think about your mom from my perspective. Yeah, and but, it's like, and it's just ironic that you said that because uh, my auntie just passed like two days ago. Wow, sorry to hear that, man. You, you know, it's something. I got aunties like right, right. now, that's all I have. I have my, my, our condolences. Yeah, oh, man. Thank you. Man. My auntie Terry, and it's just ironic, like, despite of. Uh, she was your mom's said, sister? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and the thing about it was that despite, you know, my finance and the money that I have, right? Yeah. She, she always, always used to call me, Craig, you all right? I'm like, yeah, you need some money. <laughs> <laughs> she would always check on you. Yeah, she would call me like, hey, Craig. You know, and it'd be more like, because I ain't going to lie, though. I I, I don't, I don't reach. When I see we see each other a lot, but I don't know them to be the one to pick up car. Yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 you been? Right, so when I come around and they all by my mama, you know, by the, by the, by the family house, <laughs> she'll be there. Craig, you all right? You need some money? <laughs> That's funny to me. I just think of like she go call it. <laughs> yeah, you need something. I want to make sure you're good. That's good, man, because, I, and, and that's something that. That's you can't, love. That's love. You can't make yeah. it up. You came, you, you, that's the part that know that puts you back in that place of being Craig too. Right, and see, you, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta think of like, like this, my, 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 my grandmother, well, 10 daughters, three sons, 13. Wow. And all of them like right behind each other. 10 daughters, three sons. Is she younger sons. or older than your mom? My mom is the oldest. Okay. And she falls in the middle and, um. It was uh Was it unexpected? What? Her no, no, no. We we she we was knew Ill. It, we knew it was coming. Okay. Okay. All right. And um because she was in the hospital for shit about a couple months. Wow. Wow. Not COVID anything has to do no, with No, 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 no. Okay. But I just I you know, that's 
it, it doesn't change a thing, but right. it does gives you a better time to prepare or know right. that something is not. Because the, 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 it's tough anyway, you look at it. When family, like I said, losing my mom when she was tw- she was 44, and my, right. the sisters are still here. But it's something about, I guess for me, like more of when I would go around family, you don't really feel the same no more. Right. Because it's like she was a part of that. But it's like now when you hanging around with family, you don't feel, you like, man, I'm just here. Right, I'm being real. This is the way you no, no think. For real, for I be real. feeling like that. Like when I would go over to family, they had their mom and dad there, and everybody was there. But I'm just there, you know. And it's like, dang. And they be like, no, you got to come over. It's like, not really, because mm-hmm. because I had my own way of thinking about my mom right. and my brothers and sisters. So it changes things. That's how it is with my grandson, right? My grandson called me pops. Okay, because you know, he didn't get a chance to see his father. You know, what I'm saying? yeah, so, yeah. But by him. Living with me and being with me every day, I had to step, step in the into that So you lost, you lost a son? No, 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 no. No. My grandson lost his father. Okay, got it, got it. And so got when, it. when 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 his um when, when his father, father passed, passed, you took you I stepped step into place. In. Right. That's dope. Man. And so he 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 called me pops mm-hmm. or papa. He so always he hit me with both of them. Depending on the situation. Is he, is he down here or, or, or he is? No, he, as a matter of fact, I was going to bring him, but um, he with his mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. How yeah. old is he now? Yeah. How old is he? 11. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, them, that's a good age, man. He probably in the sports or whatever now. He met yeah. P last night. Did he? Oh, yeah. ah, I was there for him. Oh, man, it, it was fun because we, we, we was at sound check, right? And he was like, oh, Papa, that Matt P? I'm like, yeah. I said, you want to go meet him? He said, yeah. <laughs> so I brought him over there. You like, I uh, say, P, my grandson want to meet you, bro. He's like, what was that, little one? Ain't, ain't nothing. And I'm like, he was like, man, I can take a picture. I'm like, yeah. So he took a picture, and he was like, he said, I want to ask him something. He told me he want to ask him something before he took the picture, though. Yeah. And he took the picture, and I said, uh, he want to ask you something, bro. So after they took the picture, P said, oh, so what you want to ask me? He said. Now that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Did he tell you what he was going to ask him? No, he didn't. Oh. He just, he just, he said, I'll he, wait. Yeah, he's like, I'll wait. I'll wait. The timing wasn't right for him right then. He said, me, I'll be curious. I'm like, okay, whisper and tell me, what, what, what were you going to ask him? One day they'll talk about it. You know, do y'all fish or anything? What do y'all do? Oh, yeah, oh, oh. He, 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 he'll tell me about it, though. Is it like, do you guys fish or do y'all, y'all do, or, or you ain't got time to fish? What are you hobby, uh, KL? I don't know. You know, what's your thing? I, I really, you I, playing golf? And I stay on the golf course. <laughs> See, that's what it is. And I don't do it, though. You don't do it. I, I, I need to be out there listen, caddying or something. I've been, I've been staying, I, I, I bought my house in 99. As a matter of fact, I bought my house in 99 on Martin Luther King birthday. Mm. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> and I've never been. On the golf course, and think about it, Fiend go golfing. He'll be he'll he'll get on the course, right? Uh huh. He'll get to where the whole way my house is. He'll he'll stop on the course and leave. And stop come to me. the house. So you stay up. He stay on the golf course. So, so that's, that's good living. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he on the golf course, man. And, <laughs> and don't golf. And don't golf. But he on the golf course. You know what I'm saying? Then when you think about like. Oh yeah, yeah, I that's the picture. See. Look at him, boy. He proud too. You see, he, proud. <laughs> he ain't playing no games. He proud. Oh, look at that smile. He's like, man, I made it, man. Mm. It made this here happen, man. That's because you know, you got to think about it, man. Going to school and stuff, man. Them kids, man. Kids talk a lot. Don't let he them fool take you. That picture and show oh, they all talk. his friends. They talk. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't show them, they talk. Man, my papa, man. We was at the concert. They talk just like us, but they had their own way of doing it. You know what I mean? Right. And it's funny because my fourteen year old. I know already. I be listening to him. I can't. He don't never talk to me like he talked to his friends. So I, I sit in the living room sometimes and just listen at him. Mm-hmm. How he talking, you know, to his friends and right. playing the games and stuff. You do that sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we know this hell. We trying to figure out what he thinking about. Yeah. Have, have you have you been to a moment where he said something like I can't believe he said that? It's been times that I be I be trying to listen. I'm gonna be honest. What I'm listening for. Is he a follower? Is he a leader? I'm in. I'm. I'm, that I'm, I'm I, that's what I'm thinking about. That's the only thing I'm kind of trying to really figure out. As far as the grades and doing his stuff, I know he do his stuff, and then he's real. He's like an introvert, right? Right. Mm-hmm. He don't really tell us nothing. Like he quiet. He, he, quiet. he don't talk like us. He we talk. He don't talk. He, right. he ain't trying to let you get in his business. He talks with his friends. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we are not cool. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we are not cool at all. So do you? Do, what are when when you leave? What's the next city for the tour? Mobile next week. Well, hey, that's dope. That's where your boy, uh, that boy, uh, Honeycomb Breeze mm-hmm. from. That's that's a different. That's We're a different be area. Mobile next week. Well, you gotta let us know when you're coming back to Dallas because we have to make we, that show. Yeah, we coming to the no, show. No, 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 no. That next time we come to Dallas, it, we I gonna show out. We young, gonna show up. Man. And I, I'm, I'm kind of mad and I'm upset because it wasn't my fault because I didn't want to promise somebody to come and and, then, I, and, I, and I don't have nothing. Correct, right. correct, correct. You because, gotta know what's going on. Right, because if I would have known, because last last time in, in Shreveport, it didn't it didn't go. Um, as far as the passes, it's yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah, the passes were different because of where you guys were at, it was where we where we were and how it was handled. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <clears throat> it was from a different promoter. Mm-hmm. Got it, got it. Man, so, you know, I just like I said, I, I'm gonna get to catch one up. I already mm-hmm. know I got KLC. I don't have to worry about it. I, at, at some point, it's happening. Man, it would have been so dope, man. If I know to see that lineup, though. <clears throat> That's the part. Yeah, yeah. That I want to ask you about your DJ and like, because DJ and go hand in hand with with the producing because you've been doing right. both the whole entire time and you went from you went from records to cassettes, CDs, records, cassettes, cassettes to no, c- right, records, records, cassettes, cassettes to CDs. CDs, and then now it's software. Right. Um. So what it, what procedure are you using? And in my mind, I'm thinking people going back to records. I don't know why I think that, but in my mind, I'm thinking everybody going back to records. But records, records, still, record sales are increasing now. Correct. So, so how it's, is it? Explain to me the transitions. It's a love hate situation. What was your thing? What was your? What was your? What was your? Like when you first started, that got to be the. That's the best time. Always, because when you first start, like in the era to where everything that you've done, you've done. You earned it, and it made you appreciate it. If somebody gets something right now and they lose it, oh man, because they didn't put no work in to get it. <clears throat> That's like as, as as a rapper now, being yeah. an artist. It don't cost shit to make a record now. Now, no, I don't. Even even back then, and I always say this: even back then, when you were being bootlegged, mm-hmm. you, you still had to. Spend money on jewel cases. You had to spend money on and pay somebody to press up your CDs. You still had to buy, if you wanted, like little sleeves to sell it. Mm -hmm. You still had to spend money and work. Now you don't have to do that. So right now, in this era of rap right now, if it was... If the if rap the way rap is right now, if it was applied to how it was then, a lot wouldn't be doing it because it's so much you had to put in to do it. Yeah, because right now by it, it it don't have a value. It's it's so easy to do to where you could just jump in it and like if I don't like it, man, nah, man, I ain't, I ain't fooling with this man because you didn't spend nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, I, the value of making a record and doing this costs nothing. So it's easy for you to um not take a loss. Because you didn't you didn't invest nothing into being it. Unless you're a CEO and you putting in all of this money trying to make this artist and if it don't work, is the CEO walking with the loss, not the artist. Right. Because you didn't you didn't spend nothing in it. And then you could leave and just go try it somewhere else. Like right now, to I mean, like back then, we actually had to spend money to where fifteen out. I mean, seventy-five to hundred dollars an hour. What a three-hour minimum. With a three-hour minimum. With a three-hour minimum. <clears throat> you you're not gonna come in the studio for forty-five minutes or an hour. You can come in. But you're gonna pay for three. Now, if you're only gonna use forty-five minutes of those three hours, that's on you. Yeah. But you're gonna pay for three. You got to pay for three. Yeah, they do do do, do the minimum. Like you know, you had to do that because you know, like studios really want to make no money to where like you come in and for a session for what forty-five minutes when somebody wants to book five hours and you only gonna have forty-five minutes within that time. They like now nah, I'll, I'll look for somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and but then, like I said, the the 
the errors because my homeboys, he DJ. He didn't like, he was carrying them crates around for a while. That's like what it. you don't want. <laughs> but what you do want, that's why I say there's a love, hate, you know, give or take, because right now you can walk around with crates and crates yeah. and crates of records on this. That's or, right. Or on your laptop to where as long as I have my laptop, I have all my music. Opposed to going to do a gig. And have to bring Yeah, but how did you change like though? You didn't just know. You had to at some point you had to be like, you know what, man, I gotta get up. I gotta change this. I was forced into it. As a matter of fact, I was officially forced into it on Mystical's Ready to Rumble record. Okay. Because we was used to recording on two inch reel. Okay. So we had to go spend two hundred and seventy five dollars on on actual reel or reel tape. Yeah. Not the machine, the, the tape. tape. So um <clears throat> I called Jive Records. I'm like, hey, uh, we about to start the recording on this mystical project. Y'all going to have to um, send a budget or send some advances down so we can start buying the tape because they're going to own it. Yeah. So if you're going to own it, you're going to have to pay for it. So when I finish, I could give it to you. To you, yeah. So when it came to that, and they were like, Craig, KL, you don't have Pro Tools yet? <laughs> and when when they said that, and that that became the standard of um of how they working and recording. What them. did you think? You like, man, I don't got no <clears throat> pro tools. I don't know nothing about that. Right, and that was the whole point. I have to learn a whole another way of recording now. You try to, and then you had to go try to figure it out. I I had to. I had to. Did you call somebody? I called some people and then I like, like hey man, you know, I'm I'm having to get on this pro too. I don't know nothing about this, man. I, I ain't really do it that way. It was way. only a few, few that I was able to call, but you know, they was always busy, so I had to trial and error. I, I, I couldn't get them when I wanted to. Yeah. So I had to go through the trial and error. Trial and error and learn it myself and um Messing up a lot of things in a <laughs> learning it. process. Yeah. Until I actually got it right and learned how to do it. Did you ever go up behind anybody or before anybody that that you, you kind of was like, dang, they go hard? Like when it came to DJing or, or either putting on somebody else's music right after them? Um, as far as DJing, I really never had to go up like in competition or anything? I ain't calling it really competition just to be, have to play after them, the crowd, just uh, this is what we do. But I can't ask you that question. You too iconic, but certain people- No, no, that but that, 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 that's a good question though. But fortunately for me, I really never had to go there because it's either I was gonna, I was gonna start it off to get it, get it right for the people or I was gonna have to close to make sure it don't end bad for the people. There you go, <laughs> there you go. So it was either it was either one. So it was either I was setting the tone, I was or I was fixing the mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so, dope. What, when you think about like like <clears throat> when you think about the new kids that you're dealing with, mm -hmm. how are you able to change the to the to the the times change because them young bucks gonna be like man I don't want to listen I don't sound like them old niggas do right right so you have to have a mindset to be able to understand how to convey all of this information as times change right how do you do that and be successful well I'm gonna tell you like this here go ahead keep on this is the difference right the difference is this here the difference we is this that. when it comes down to Lyrics, writing lyrics. Okay. That would change how people sound in their content and what they rap about or sing about on the record. So the different cadences. But when it comes down to music. Okay. Music don't speak. Music makes you feel different. And my thing of saying this here is that even like you look at some of the music that we have now. It's part of what they took from me. And part of what I got came from what came before me. Okay. So, and the thing about it is, even like now, all of the artists speaking the same subject, but it's about how they are doing it now. That's the difference. Because um, the reason why some of our parents right now don't get it is because 
we have to curse too much to get our point across. Okay. So that will change, like, God damn, man, why, they got to curse on everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's going to be that, and it, it, it's either going to be to the point of how sexual everything is on the record. And it went from us talking about people on drugs to people talking about being on drugs. It sure did. That's the difference. So it's still the same thing, but it's about how they changing it. By what they say. By what they say, yeah. Wow, yeah, and I, I always, like I said, that was some, a question in my mind, like, how do we, cause you've been able to understand this algorithm of how change is coming and be effective in change. Right. Some people can't figure that out. You know, some of those guys get caught in an in a error and they never come out. Right. Well, we'll put it like this. My thing is this is that I was caught in a position of the um, how it started. And I came in on how it started, but evolving, in, evolving into where it's going. So I was caught like right in the middle of it. Wow. So I was able to make the transition. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's just like you look at Earth, Wind, and Fire, or one of them, one of them groups having to you get the you get a real bass player have to play the, the keyboard part on on a piano or key. Like no, no, I'm used to a feeling a real instrument. Yeah, yeah. Because when they made records back then, everything was a live performance. They didn't have like what 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 like you look at look at it perfect like with the editing, how you was able how you able to just get all of the video footage. Put it in the computer. Yeah, and hit a button and brr. Right. Now, back then, you got to look at to when they had to actually record it on film, splice it up and tape, and chop it up and do this and do that and do that. You know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's what it was, though. You know what I'm saying? So it's my thing is to this here, and I'm going to just say this here before we go, is that if the artist producers in this industry of music if they learn how things was done then and apply it to now, you'll be some bad motherfucker. Man. Man, let me tell you something, man. I appreciate you for coming on the show. We down here in New Orleans, man. Um, Chaos, you you one of them ones, man. You family. You like my brother. I call no you. You always there for me. Uh, me and my wife, we 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 loving the we we loving the whole podcast world now you know no what I'm saying? it's cause of people like you if relationship building man so we can't make this up man god been good to us man all the thank time. you so much man no god doubt. bless you man hey man it's been another great segment of boss talk 101 what a bosses talk man and we believe out. that